Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. I am Madam Yusna Lisa. I'm going to show you how to prepare a statement of cash flow under the direct method. Today and we are going to use uh, an example coming from a company called Rantai and Berhat. And we're going to prepare the statement of cash flow using direct method. Yeah? Uh, adopting again the color-coded approach. So these are the information that is given, which is the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, yeah, which is normally very common if you are asked to prepare a statement of cash flow using direct method. You will normally be given a statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. In certain situations, you may be given the statement of changes in equity, yeah, here no. But uh, you, your statement of uh, profit or loss here do not have the other comprehensive income. So if you have, you may have the detail right after the profit after tax. You are also given the statement of financial position, two years financial statement, the one from last year, uh, which is the prior period financial statement, 31st of December 2016 and 31st of December 2017, the current year, which is the period that we are concerned. 31st of December 2017. We have the non-current asset and all those uh, items under current assets yeah, that may be relevant later for us to prepare the statement of cash flow that we need to go and look at what caused the changes to these two balances. right? Uh, then you have your equity and reserve with uh, the uh, classification. Uh, this is a classified statement of financial position which is also known as balance sheet we have the non-current liabilities and you'll see what caused the changes to all these items in the statement of financial position whether any of those changes relate to cash inflow or cash outflow that will later be classified under the uh, sections one two three and four section one is under operating activities, section 2 is under investing activities, section 4 is under financing activities and the last section is the cash and cash equivalent section that you will have the answer to the cash flow normally from that part of the cash and cash equivalent schedule. These are the information given, right? Information, not, not many information given because this is for direct method. A lengthier information is normally given if you are asked to prepare for indirect method. Okay, these are the requirements you have been asked to prepare using the direct method in accordance with the related MFRS in Malaysia. MFRS is Malaysian Financial Reporting Standards which is equivalent to the International Financial Reporting Standards. And the standard that is guiding the statement of cash flow is IAS 7 which is statement of cash flow. Let's start. Okay, uh, let's look at how to uh, prepare. And as I said to you earlier, I will prepare using the color-coded approach. Let me show you what is the color-coded approach for those that have not uh, come across any of this before. There were many videos published on this color-coded approach where there are six steps and I will follow the steps given here starting with the preparation of the template and then proceed with step number two, three, four, five and six. And uh, because the term is color code, let me tell you that the color code used in this question or in my approach is for the cash and cash equivalent I'll be using uh, green uh, investing activities, I will use the color code uh, to highlight that a uh, blue um, uh, for the uh, operating activities, the color code is um, purple financing activities, I use brown and the non-cash and non-operating item, yeah, I'll be using the uh, color code turquoise. These are things that are not cash uh, transaction, non-cash transaction, but somehow have impact to the cash flow to the that relates to investing and financing. So let's start with the first one. We are going to start with preparing the template correctly. Remember when you start with direct method, you are going to show this 
template. So if you look at the template that I'm that I've prepared for you, it should have four. Uh, it should has four section. This is section one, cash flow from operating activities. List down those uh, items that you will have to include under cash flow from operating activities, starting with the cash receipt from customer. We'll work it out using T account for that cash payment to supplier, cash payment to employees, and other operating expenses. You want to see uh, how much is uh, involved in terms of our operating cash flow. And then the cash generated from operation, just put the blank template, put the interest paid. If you do not have later, you can just put a dash. Uh, and then find out the next cash, net cash flow. Put the, I, the few lines for the second section, cash flow from investing, Yep, leave some space and then a cash flow from financing, leave some space and go and get the total from the three. Yep, we'll be doing that. And uh, go and do the section four, which is cash and cash equivalent. Cash and cash equivalent will be normally uh, the component of cash, bank balances, short term investment, which is less than three months. Marketable securities that qualify as cash and cash equivalent, and things like bank overdraft that is reducing the uh, cash and cash equivalent component. Okay, we are done with that. We have the set template correctly prepared. Now we're going to label correctly. Look at the step here the opening balance and closing balances given in the comparative soft P. So we are going to label by Putting the correct classification in terms of the which one is classified as opening, which one is classified as closing. We've done this, All right? Um, that put is here. Opening balance is two thousand sixteen, which is thirty first of December two thousand sixteen, first of January two thousand seventeen. Closing, and you create one column for changes. Right. To see any of this relates to uh, cash inflow or cash outflow, we need to go and determine what are the change, net changes, not only in cash and cash equivalent, but also those changes that relates to the cash flow. Right. So that was step number three. We have to color code that differently. So my color code is at the bottom here. I have different colors put for different um, items in the cash flow. So you can see the one that is for cash and cash equivalent there is only one item for cash and cash equivalent which is bank and you can see that the changes for this uh, item bank balance is 72987 so it was an increase right so 72987 will be the one that you will show here right and this figure is the closing balance so it will go here and the opening balance will go here which is cash and cash equivalent at the beginning of the year the difference between those two balances it should be the total balances let me remind you total balances coming from the cash and cash equivalent component you are advised to draw a schedule but i don't do that today because there is only one item for this particular example so the difference between those balance at the beginning and balance at the end is an increase if there is a decrease you write here decrease in cash and cash equivalent okay done with that you are confident to start with the rest yep so i'm adopting a bottom up approach right what i will do now is i'm going to focus on the third uh, the fourth step which is i'm going to find out what are the cash flow from financing activities by reconstructing the T account where necessary. If the information is given directly from the question, you do not need to go and construct the T accounts. You can just take the, your calculator and plus minus the figure. But if there is more of, you know, um, how to say, comprehensive or more complex information, you are advised to reconstruct the T account so that you can see what are those things that have been done throughout the current year right so we're going to start off with determining the cash flow from financing activities we go on with this first okay 
right? So because I use the color code, financing activities is chalk, uh, sorry, the brown. So before we do that, we'll do all the color coding first, right? We do the color coding first for all those activities according to the color. So I've done the color code, uh, coding earlier. And this one, as I told you, these are all for investing activities because these are related to uh, maybe during the year they are purchase or disposal of long uh, term asset, right? Like investment and non current asset, right? So this one is blue. And bank balances, I have already decided to use green. Yep. And this one is operating cash flow. We want to see whether these operating items, inventories, trade receivable, which are under operating cash flow, operating activities. Yep. So we put that as purple. We also do the same, meaning that all these uh, changes, you must also do it, right? go and find the changes you will be doing that for each item yeah and that would be uh, done not only for our financing activities but we will start off with financing activities okay let's start off with financing activities the first item is ordinary share capital so if you look at the different the two balances here you can see that there was an increase in the balance and that increase in the balance is 75750. So you need to go and check if there is any information given related to that. Yes, you are given the information that shares were issued for cash. So this 75750 will be assumed as issuance of share for cash. So you will have to take that item. Remember to also go and check the item for your bank balances just now which form parts of the cash as cash and cash equivalent so this figure 75750 will be your item that you will have to include in your in your statement of cash flow under the financing activity so you put your first item there which is issuance of ordinary shares okay now we go to the next item next item we go and check if there are any changes yes an increase of ten thousand an increase of ten thousand and check if there is any information if there are any other factors that cause the increase if there is none you also assume the same that increase of ten thousand will be put here and included as issuance of shares coming from the preference shares next retain earnings okay for retain earnings normally we will use this information a lot when we prepare the statement of cash flow using indirect method under the direct method normally retain earning is used to ascertain the dividend paid right because we normally declare dividends to our shareholders equity shareholders from our uh, retain profit right uh, meaning to say that you declare out of the uh, appropriation of your profits yep so therefore uh, the uh, difference here it does not really matter because you have your retained earnings yes the difference the difference here is one two nine two hundred but this is not going to be used since for the dividend section, yeah, which is part of the financing activities, uh, that was directly given in information number four. So look at the information on dividend paid. For dividend paid, you are informed that it was the interim dividend this year, which is 37.5 million, and it will be paid together with the dividend payable at the beginning of the year. So at the beginning of the year, you have the dividend of 3150. So that 3150 will be added with the interim dividend 37.5. And that will make up the dividend paid to be shown in the statement of cash flow under the financing activities. However, it is not necessary for you to go and set up the dividend payable account unless that is not determined directly. But here it was directly given 
So what you can do is you just go and create one more row here and put the dividend paid. By adding up the interim dividend, so I put here interim, and that should be added with the um, the prior year or the uh, last year last year dividend last year dividend payable. Okay, that was to be included there. Last year dividend payable. Okay. Next, you have another item. So whatever item that you have already uh, checked or have already reviewed, please put a tick. Okay. Now we have another item, which is our bank loan. So bank loan, it seems that there is an increase. Yeah. And that was increase was by 80,000. So check if you pay any bank loan given here. No, it was, you will inform that the bank loan was acquired on 1st of July. So when bank loan was acquired on 1st of July, it was during the year, after half year. Yeah. So the interest that you should charge is also for just half year because interest expense will only start uh, for that uh, 80,000 starting from 1st of July 2000. 17 that, that is for you to take note in case there are some information on interest payable here in your question there are no interest payable so all the interests have been provided for and that has been shown in the uh, statement of profit or loss here okay so the bank loan the cha changes of 80,000 will be included here Okay, and that will be your proceed from bank loan. If there is a decrease in the bank loan, that will be concluded as there will be maybe some repayment of loan. Now you have the total for the loan, which is for T650 uh, for the dividend for the loan was 80,000. And the total coming from financing activities is an inflow of 45180 million. Let's move on to investing activities. For the investing activities, my advice is do the simple things first. So let's look at your investing activities. There are a few things here. You have the land the, that is not depreciated, land and premises. Mach machinery, this is a, an item that are subject to be depreciated. Investment, which is a non uh, tangible assets right so those two things are tangible these two so let's look at the changes so you do the calculation for the changes here and we need to go and check for land and premises what caused the changes if you can see there was an increase here right so the, if there is no information stated here then you have no information saying that there, there is a disposal whatsoever you can assume that was due to changes because of purchase of new land. Uh, same goes for the investment. You can also assume that is due to purchase of new investment because no information uh, that specifically inform regarding disposal of investment. Before that, if you go to the statement of profit or loss, you have one item, dividend received from investment. This is actually um, to be put under your investing activities if your company have adopted such policy, yeah, dividend received from uh, investing, uh, uh, investing in other companies, maybe shares, right? Or, or maybe you may have also interest received. So this one is part of investing activities. So check if there is any other uh, item that relates to accrual or uh, relates to unearned dividend yeah none right if you can you can check under the current asset none so the first item that you will put in the cash flow from investing activities that was a direct information would be your dividend received from investment we just take this figure 
and put it here. Why? No need for you to go and reconstruct the T account because there is no uh, accru accrual or any unearned uh, dividend, unearned or deferred uh, dividend received, right? Okay. Mm. Next one is uh, dividend. So we are done with this. We can put a tick here. Okay. Now we go on to our land and premises. So these changes will be included here because no other information that changes. You can put the working here in the um in your what uh, in your statement so i'm actually doing for investment first i'm doing for investment i'll put a tick here for investment yes hundred and seventy thousand that was the purchase of investment no other disposal next i'm going to do for my land okay the changes will be put here and that will be put as purchase of land and premises no depreciation involved so that was an outflow because you can see that the balances increases right the next item is machinery so machinery uh, you may need to go and reconstruct the the account so the, but the changes is 600000 um however that might not be uh, enough for you to conclude that was due to purchase why because the machinery is subject to be depreciated right uh, if that is the case let us just look at the reconstruction of the accounts that is here before we go and find the item so if you look at the bottom here uh, i put the balance at the beginning here Yep, I will just put this. I put the balance 34.6. That is from the beginning balance in the soft, soft pages now. This is the ending balance. Put the balance on the debit side on the, uh, the beginning balance on the debit side. Put the balance on the uh, credit side relating to the closing balance. The depreciation here is given in the additional information. So if you go to additional information, because the asset is at carrying value, the depreciation that I used the cost here shows non-cash transaction amounting to 50,000. In terms of the uh, entry here, there is no depreciation account, uh, accumulated depreciation account being given. That carrying value simply means that account is already at cost minus accumulated depreciation. Carrying value means this is already at cost minus accumulated depreciation okay so you will do the adjustment for depreciation also in the machinery at carrying value so put the depreciation there because you will debit them to the software you will credit them to the machinery at credit value uh, at the carrying value 30 50 000. and remember this is a non cash item and now you can find out what are your cash flow uh, from your investing activity. 650000 How? Total up the credit side minus the total on the debit side. So we have 650000 That 650000 is the one that you should show. And the color is blue actually. Sorry for that. Okay. That you will put here right you have now your total for your investing activities we will continue with the uh, total or find out the cash flow from our operating activities in our second video with that i'll thank you for watching i'll see you when i will see you yeah just catch up with me with my next video thank you for watching assalamualaikum and have a good day ahead